Hello friends, Lays Awake, and I feeling guilty that he pretended to be a girl to get free stuff on RuneScape when he was 13 years old here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on personality traits that you absolutely must have in order to get pro-level MMR for each role in Dota. First and foremost, I want to pose two simple questions. What role do you play, and why do you play that role? What led you to playing that role in the first place? The reason that I ask these questions is because I honestly believe that the vast majority of Dota players are playing their role for totally arbitrary, if not random reasons. Why does it matter? If your actual real-life personality does not mesh with the personality type required for the role that you play, you absolutely will cap out at an MMR that is far below your potential. Why is this the case? Well, this I could and probably will eventually make an entire video justifying, but the TLDR is basically that I believe, even outside of Dota, there's very little point in trying to be something that you're not. Dota 2 is a disgustingly versatile game, with so many heroes, so many builds, and so many playstyles that are all totally viable. It honestly might be the most versatile game. In most other games, people will theorycraft the hell out of it until it gets boring, and everybody's basically rinse and repeating the same shit. And that's honestly what's happening with Aghanim's Labyrinth right now. That does not happen in Dota 2. That is the beauty of this game. So not only is it possible to find the perfect playstyle for your personality, you eventually won't be able to compete with the people that do develop their own unique playstyle. And this is for two reasons. Reason number one, they'll set the meta while you follow it, always lagging just behind at very best. Reason number two, they will be playing on lightning fast instincts, whereas you will have to think about your every move consciously. You cannot compete with that, unless you are also developing your own unique playstyle as well, giving you the exact same advantages over them. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the most important personality traits for each role in Dota 2. First, let's talk about the carry position. In my opinion, the most important personality trait for a carry player is that you are calculated. You might be thinking, but Jenkins, all carry players do is watch One Punch Man on Netflix on their second monitor while AFK hitting neutral creeps, right? Surely these players are greedy. I disagree. Sure, carry players are spoon-fed babies that cry like small infants whenever their support leaves the lane to pull, but with the entire game being handed to them on a silver platter, comes a cost. That cost is responsibility. Carry players have the burden of being the game's insurance policy. In a Dota game, there's what, 10 to 15 teamfights on average? In a reasonably difficult game as a carry player, you have to pick one or two of these fights that you know when you show up to it, you're going to win that fight with the amount of farm that you have. If you show up to that fight and you die, well, you usually lose. If you show up to that fight and you kill the enemies, well then you're probably still in the game and you might win. Oh, and also, if you die a couple of times while farming before that team fight, then you probably only have one fight to choose from instead of two. So, carry players have an immense burden on their shoulders, and therefore have to be incredibly calculated. Next, let's talk about mid laners. When I think of the mid lane, I imagine players like CCNC, Sumail, and Topson. These are some of the world's most mechanically skilled players, playing the single most mechanically demanding role in the game. In the mid lane, first you're thrown into a tiny little lane against only one other guy who is going to try their absolute hardest to outplay you and deny every single creep in front of your face. Then you are expected to win both of the side lanes while also not losing your tower, and also you have to scale and carry the game while still being incredibly active in fights. Moreover, most mid-heroes are experience-dependent, and they also happen to have an incredibly high skill cap. And I say happen to have a high skill cap, but this is most likely the result of Valve just being pretty damn good at balancing these heroes that can both scale and fight by making them difficult to play. So, clearly it's a mechanically difficult role, and I think most people agree with that, but... I propose that in order to thrive in this role, you have to be extremely confident. 
to the point where I'm willing to just call it cocky. The reason that I think being cocky is the most important personality trait for a mid laner is because cocky players absolutely revel in the opportunity to outplay people. They will go for the high risk, high reward plays all the time because it's in their nature. And that is what the mid lane is all about. If I have a choice, I want my mid laner to live for these outskill moments because I know that, since their role gets so much XP and farm, the slightest outplay can make them pop off and basically 1v9 the game. Next, let's talk about the most manly, objectively best role in Dota 2, the offlane. Historically in Dota, there was a battle between two different styles of offlaners. First, you had your dirty jobs type of offlaner. You know, the guy that went into the offlane, didn't feed, and just did a good job regardless of whatever scraps he was given in the lane. Then, you had the crazy psychopaths that would feed relentlessly, but also make a metric dog shit ton of space in the process. The latter group ended up winning the battle, and to this day, that is how the offlane is played. Because of this, the most important personality trait for an offlane player is that you are mischievous. This role is all about taking your net worth and making the game easier to play for your other heroes, especially your other two cores. See, the weird thing about the offlane is that it's typically considered a core role, and in the realm of farm priority, that's not wrong. But when it comes to what your job actually is in the game, by any sane person's definition, you're actually a support. You build auras to protect your team from enemies, you run in and initiate team fights, you tank spells for your team, you tank ganks for your team, you distract the enemy team so that your boys can farm, but you do all of these things with scaling net worth as the game progresses. So realistically, the sky's the limit when it comes to how much space you can make. For this reason, people who naturally enjoy finding creative ways to essentially troll the enemy team will do extremely well in this role. For this reason, being mischievous is a requirement if you want to succeed. Finally, let's talk about the support positions, starting with the 4 position. This role is typically associated with roaming in the early game and in the mid to late game, setting up team fights, ganks, and generally comboing with your team to kill people. On this role, at any point in the game, it's really important to know who you can kill and who you need with you to actually kill the people that you want to murder. But the problem with Dota is that at a high level, it is realistically far too fast paced to have any sort of meaningful conversation with your teammates about kill potential or to manually calculate if you can kill somebody. The moments are just too small, they pass very quickly. For this reason, good 4 position players have the best understanding of the most amount of heroes in the game when compared with any of the other roles in Dota. You need to be able to look at the enemy mid laner, know what camp they're about to go farm, and know that your nearby teammates are ready and able to kill said target if you initiate on them immediately. That, my friends, is a whole lot of knowing other people's intentions without any form of communication. And for this reason, it's my opinion that good position 4 players have a high level of empathy as their most important personality trait. Maybe empathy is the wrong word, but you can kind of see what I'm getting at here. If you are able to empathize with the enemies and know their likely future actions, you can set up ganks on them. The exact same thing can be said for playing with and around your team across the map. As for the 5 position, my gut instinct, and I'm sure a lot of other people's gut instinct, is that the most important personality trait is that they are sacrificial. But then I started thinking about it a bit more deeply. Does a 5 position really need to be sacrificial? Well, yeah, of course, to some degree, but I definitely don't think it's the most important personality trait. It's just the bare minimum. It's a requirement. But just because you run in and feed to place wards for 40 minutes straight doesn't make you a good position 5 if your wards are total crap and they just get dewarded. In fact, that's probably the biggest problem for a lot of position 5s, is that they're hard locked into this mindset that as long as they're sacrificing, they're playing well. But for a lot of these players, they're nothing but a totally unnecessary martyr. 
You know those people in horror movies that run in and die to the killer just before their family gets saved, but they did it to protect their family, and like everybody's happy, but it just doesn't feel like it was totally necessary, and a character is dead now, and you're like, what the hell, why did this happen? That is bad position fives in pubs. If you take a look at the world's top position fives, a far more common thread than being sacrificial is that they are strategic. Good position fives are focused on the entire game plan, where and when to ward, where and when to deward, where and when to smoke, where and when on the map they should stand to intercept ganks, and a whole lot more. Basically, in order to properly play position 5, you have to know a lot about the enemy team's strategy and the strategy that you want to execute. Do they have a Medusa? Well, then you need to ward and smoke to their triangle frequently because that's exactly where the enemy team is going to play. Do they have a bounty hunter? Well, you need to place wards and sentries at the entrance of your jungle and set up ganks on him so you can kill him while he's scouting. In other words, sacrifice is important for position 5, but exclusively if you are doing it for a strategic reason. And so that, in my opinion, is why being a strategic-minded person is the most important personality trait for a position 5. So, where does this leave us? My genuine advice to you is if you care about hitting your Apex MMR in Dota, you should really assess whether the role you are playing is the right one for you. Do you like farming, but you play offlane? Maybe you should try carry. Do you like trolling people, but you play mid? Maybe you should give offlane a try. That's basically it. If you assess that you are playing the right role, then all the power to you either way and good luck with the grind. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so I can be boosted in the YouTube algorithm and afford to pay the hobos to stop sending me death threats. As always, I genuinely appreciate you existing, and I hope to see you in another video.